Valentina didn't hold any ill will towards her second daughter-in-law, Tatiana, despite her being a divorcee, but she also didn't have any strong affection for her. Valentina believed that if it weren't for Tatiana, there would have been a chance for her son Paul to reconcile with his first wife and return to the family. Valentina didn't have much love for Paul's first wife, Svetlana, either. She was not one to love many people, but her granddaughter Olechka was an exception. Valentina adored the child and was convinced that if it weren't for Tatiana, Olechka would have grown up without a father. Valentina failed to acknowledge that Paul had divorced Svetlana due to her infidelity. Although he forgave her once, he couldn't bring himself to do so a second time and kicked her out of the house. Svetlana packed her bags and left for her mother's house while cursing her husband and his family. Since Olechka was staying there, she didn't witness the ugly family scenes that ensued. Svetlana returned a few times to retrieve her belongings from Paul's apartment in his absence and filed for divorce and alimony herself. Despite these circumstances, Valentina couldn't calm down. She even went to court to persuade the judge not to grant Paul and Svetlana a divorce. Before the session began, she repeated to her son, you never know what happens in life. There are no sins that cannot be forgiven. However, Paul was no longer interested in Svetlana, he met. Tatiana, by chance on a country highway, drove her to the institute and fell in love. Tatiana was eager to develop a friendship with her mother-in-law. She would frequently inquire about Valentina's well-being, health, and needs, and would extend invitations for her to visit. Each time Valentina came over, Tatiana would prepare a plethora of delicious dishes. However, it proved to be challenging to please Valentina, as she always found fault with something, even if she ate heartily. Furthermore, Valentina was slow to accept invitations and behaved as though she was patronizing those present. She would take every opportunity to grumble about how cozy the apartment used to be and how it lacked Alechka, her granddaughter. When Tatiana became pregnant, she hoped that Valentina would be happier once she became a grandmother. Despite Tatiana's efforts to keep her mother-in-law informed, Valentina showed no interest in the pregnancy. When Tatiana was discharged from the hospital, Valentina failed to show up, citing that she had to meet her daughter from school. Valentina would travel to the other side of town every day to collect Olechka from school and take her home even though the school was situated in their apartment building's yard. She believed it was her responsibility to do so. However, Valentina didn't visit her grandson for weeks or even months, always coming up with an excuse such as a cold, high blood pressure, or fear of jinxing him. Paul couldn't tolerate it any longer and called his mother. He wanted to understand what was happening because when Olechka was born, he and his ex-wife didn't know how to rid themselves of his mother's constant presence, but now they couldn't even get her to visit. During their phone conversation, Paul's mother told him that she simply did not have the time to visit her grandson because he was still too young. She also mentioned that she might consider visiting him when he's older, but only if Olechka wouldn't mind. Tatiana overheard the conversation and felt hurt for her son, who was deemed unworthy of his grandmother's attention. From then on, she stopped trying to win over her mother-in-law, and Paul became so angry with his mother that he decided to take a paternity test for Olechka. The test results showed that his first wife had been cheating on him even before they got married. Without hesitation, Paul filed a petition with the court to challenge paternity and to cancel the alimony for Olechka. When Valentina learned of this, she immediately rushed to her son's home. It was the first time she met her grandson Timothy, but she had no time for him. She yelled at Paul, demanding that he drop the lawsuit and not deprive her of her granddaughter. Valentina refused to accept the test results, and when Paul refused to withdraw his petition, she declared that he was no longer her son and stormed out, slamming the door behind her. The court proceedings dragged on for several months, with Svetlana demanding a new examination, as she didn't want to lose the substantial alimony. 
However, Paul ultimately prevailed and got his way. Valentina had always wanted a closer relationship with her son and her granddaughter, but her constant criticisms and complaints made it difficult. Even when Tatiana became pregnant, Valentina remained disinterested in the pregnancy and did not attend the hospital when Timothy was born. Instead, she spent her time picking up her other granddaughter from school and showing her off to everyone. When Valentina learned that her son was challenging paternity and canceling alimony for his first daughter, she was furious. She demanded that he drop the lawsuit, but when he refused, she disowned him and left. Valentina's financial situation was dire, and she filed for child support for Timothy. However, the court rejected her claim, and Pavel offered to help her with rent instead. Valentina refused his offer, and they parted ways. Svetlana, Pavel's ex-wife, then forbade Valentina from seeing Oleczka. The young girl had grown tired of her grandmother's constant complaints and criticisms, and was glad to be free of her. Valentina's troubles only seemed to mount, and she was left alone with her regrets. Valentina was deeply shocked by the court's rejection of her claim for child support, and it had a profound effect on her health. She barely managed to reach home and had to call an ambulance, which took her to the hospital where she was diagnosed with a stroke. After a few days, when the doctors allowed visitors, Paul went to see his mother in the hospital. He was filled with pity as he looked at her twisted face, but he refrained from touching her so as not to upset her. Valentina managed to utter a few words, which Paul understood to be her anger towards him. Despite this, Paul paid for his mother's medical care, rehabilitation, and even hired a nurse for her. He did all of this through a friend of his mother who supported him. However, every time Paul attempted to reconcile with his mother, she would become angry and refuse to speak to him. Despite this, Paul continued to support his mother in any way he could, silently paying for her care and medication. He no longer had any hope of reconciling with her, but he did what he could to ensure her comfort and well-being. Subscribe to our channel not to miss new interesting life stories. Give us your likes, write your opinion in the comments.